Doy ahora la palabra al embajador Sacha Llorenti. Tiene la palabra. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. I'm pleased to have the opportunity and honor to brief the Security Council on the work of the 1540 Committee in its task of overseeing the implementation of Resolution 1540. As we all recognize, the importance of Resolution 1540 as a key element in the global effort to prevent the proliferation of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons and their means of delivery to non-state actors, including terrorists, I need to stress that we have a truly challenging task in overseeing the implementation of Resolution 1540. Resolution 1540 is a platform for cooperation to prevent non-state actors from gaining access to weapons of mass destruction. We need to be clear that without cooperation, it would be impossible to address the issue at a global level. In that framework, I'd like to inform the Security Council about the main 1540 Committee's activities since, we previous briefing, since, my, since my previous briefing provided to the Security Council and give an overview of upcoming events and some prospects for this year. In 2018, the committee continues to build on the momentum imparted to its work by the outcome of the two, uh, 2016 Comprehensive Review and the subsequent Resolution 2325 of 15 December 2016. Under this resolution, the Security Council directed the 1540 Committee to intensify its efforts to promote the full implementation of all 1540 obligations by all states. To this end, detailed proposals were incorporated in the, into the 2018 program of work that will shortly be submitted. The committee inter alia plans to hold discussions on enforcing appropriate effective laws for the prohibition of activities under paragraph two of the Security Council Resolution 1540. Plans to take note of the continually evolving nature of the risks of proliferation and also plans to hold a close expert level meeting on the committee to consider other issues highlighted in Security Council Resolution 2325. In addition, a report of implementation of Resolution 1540 from all member states remain one of the highest priorities for the committee. In this regard, I'm glad to inform you that we received two first reports in 2017 from Equatorial Guinea and Zimbabwe. More recently, in early 2018, we also received a first report from Timor-Leste. This brings to 180, the number of states that have submitted national reports. However, we still have before us a challenge of 13 non-reporting states. To achieve universal reporting as soon as possible might include issuing non-verbals to member states that reiterate requirements on reporting on national implementation and meeting countries' representatives in the margins of the General Assembly. States are also encouraged to inform the committee of their points of contact for the implementation of Resolution 1540. In 2017, Belize, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Costa Rica, and Mauritania did so, bringing to 101 the number of states that have now done so. To strengthen the capabilities of the points of contact and of the POCs network as a whole, in 2017, the committee organized one regional training course for the Asia Pacific region. The seminar was hosted for the second time by China. For 2018, two more POC training courses are planned, one for the African region in Addis Ababa in cooperation with the African Union in June 2018, and another plan for the OSCE region in September 2018 in Russia. Voluntary national implementation action plans were another priority of the committee. The committee continued to work with the support of regional and sub-regional organizations to help member states develop and implement voluntary 1540 in APS. During 2017, the committee received five new NAPS, while Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan submitted already the reviewed and second voluntary NAPS as of today. 31 NAPS have been received. 
The committee's group of experts participated in round tables intending to develop new NAPs in El Salvador, Guatemala, Guyana, Mongolia, Suriname, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. The work of NAPs with other countries will be con continued upon the, re the request during the current year. The committee also continued to promote the sharing of experience, including through peer reviews, to evaluate the reinforced effective practices in effective implementation of Resolution 1540. The peer review meetings conducted by Colombia and Chile and by Belarus, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, respectively, in 2017, constitute very good examples of this effective mechanism. The committee will continue to support the states that wish to conduct peer reviews and will act actively encourage such meetings where appropriate. To enhance its capacity to better monitor implementation of Resolution 1540, the committee considered and approved last year a revised matrix format. The changes made streamline the existing matrix by better reflecting the obligations contained in Resolution 1540. In accordance with Resolution 2325, the revised matrix also takes into account the specificity of the states with respect to their ability to manufacture and export related materials. During 2018, the committee's group of experts will convert existing matrices to the new format. With the objective to better support the states in developing more detailed and effective assistance requests and to better provide them in response to their requests with effective assistance that meets their needs, the committee revised its assistance template in March 2017. This will in effect strengthen the committee's effort as matchmaker. The new assistance template is published on the committee's website. The committee received new assistance requests from Belize, Kenya, and Tajikistan. The requests were sent to potential assistance providers, and summaries were published on the committee homepage, as usual. In 2017, the committee also considered how to improve the facilitation of technical assistance to states and decided to task its group of experts at the state's invitation and subject to available resources to actively facilitate assistance. With this, the committee aims at being able to close a gap in assistance for those states and regions that are committed to, implementation, to implementing their obligations but have not been recipients of assistance offers so far. In 2017, the committee continued to exchange information with relevant international, regional, and sub-regional organizations, involve them in its outreach activities, for example, 1540 POC training courses and encourage them to highlight obligations of resolutions 1540 in their model leg legislations and or guidelines or training of states as appropriate. In total, in 2017, there were 53 outreach events by and with, by and with international, regional or sub-regional organizations in which the chair, committee members and experts participated. The committee also continued to develop its website, website as a tool to raise public awareness and serve as a source of information and source of resolution, 1540, for use and by member states, committee members, civil society, and industry. The new design of the website, finalized in 2016, provides enhanced usability and appeal. On 24 December 2017, after consultations with the committee, the United Nations Secretary General appointed six new experts for the 1540 group of experts, as during 2017, the term of some previous experts had ended. Three, three new experts have already joined the group, while the remaining new colleagues will follow by end of April 2018. In that regard, a process will be initiated to select a new coordinator for the group of experts in the nearest future. The outgoing members of the Security Council, Japan and Egypt, serve as coordinators of the committee's working group one and monitoring and national implementation and working group three on cooperation with international organizations, including ISIL Daesh and Al Qaeda Sanctions Committee and Counterterrorism Committee, respectively. I wish to thank both delegations for their vital contribution to the work of the committee. 
In that sense, on behalf of the committee, I'd like to welcome Mr. Henry Prieto from the delegation of Peru as coordinator of the Working Group of Monitoring and National Implementation, and Mr. Antonin Biecki from the delegation of Cote d'Ivoire as coordinator of the Working Group on Cooperation with International Organizations, including, including the ISIL, Daesh, and Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee and the Counterterrorism Committee. Both of them started working as new coordinators of the working groups on 4 April 2018. I'd like sincerely to thank those states that have made substantial contributions to the United Nations Trust Fund for global and regional disarmament activities directly in support of 1540 implementation. Without these contributions, the committee would be severely hampered in fulfilling its mandate in overseeing the implementation of the resolution and in facilitating capacity building where it is most needed. In 2017, Funds were used for grants provided in early years by Canada, Germany, Japan, Kazakhstan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States, and from donations made by Japan and the European Union in 2017. Before closing, I'd like to make a few additional points with regard to the committee's planned outreach activities in the near future. As for my own country, Bolivia, we plan to host a regional conference on 15 foreign implementation in May this year for Latin American and Caribbean countries. The government of the plurinational state of Bolivia in cooperation with the 1540 committee will convene a conference for the states of Latin America and the Caribbean on the implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540 and its follow-up resolutions in La Paz from 9 to 10 May 2018. The conference is dedicated to actively support the implementation of the resolution in the Latin American and Caribbean region it will provide a platform for states to present their existing laws and regulations that serve their implementations, and it will especially provide an opportunity to exchange views and effective practices on the handling of related materials with a view to strengthening the region's record on the implementation on Resolution 1540. The committee is considering conducting, uh, conducting another regional assistance conference at an appropriate time in 2018. Here, the committee will continue to draw on the good collaboration already established with the key international organizations to help with the delivery of assistance and support for related activities. Regarding cooperation with international and regional organizations and UN entities, the tasks set out in Resolution 2325 are specific. The committee's group of experts has already had a meeting with the Counterterrorism Committee Executive, Executive Directorate to prepare future country visits later this year and with CTITF on how best to collaborate to support 1540 committee's activities, in particular with respect to scientific and technological trends and the risk of misuse by non-state actors. With regard to the key international organizations that support this work, the 1540 committee will take advantage of the visits to New York but head of, of these organizations to meet the committee in order to encourage the support to Resolution 1540 implementation. In continuation of the so-called Wiesbaden <laughs> process, which stands for an active dialogue between states and industry on effective implementation of export controls and which was initiated by Germany, two more regional events designed to engage industry are so far planned for 2018. One is a regional meeting taking place 16, 17 April in New Delhi, India. And the other one will take place in September 2018 in the Republic of Korea. These activities are supported by a, a grant to the Trust Fund from Germany. If any members of the committee would like more information on these events, particularly regarding possible participation, do not hesitate to get in touch with the group of experts. I'd like to conclude by reiterating my commitment to the full implementation of Resolution 1540. The threat of use of weapons of mass destruction by non-state actors is a clear and evolving reality. The 1540 Committee will continue its efforts to prevent its, this danger with the strong support of the member states and other international partners. The Committee, with the support of its group of experts and the UN Office for Disarmament Affairs, is ready 
to cooperate with and, as requested, to facilitate assistance to states with their 154 implementation efforts that will contribute to achieving our common objective to prevent the catastrophic use of weapons of mass destruction by non-state actors. Before closing, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to thank all the delegations that have participated in the, in, not just in our work, but also in concluded our, uh, our program of work that has been just uh, uh, distributed. Without uh, the continuous help of all the delegation, it would be impossible to achieve our goals. I thank you very much for your attention. Le agradezco al embajador Sacha Llorenti por su muy informativa exposición.